What we have here is a Dell Optiplex 7040 small form factor desktop. This is going to be a teardown and overview of important system features, uh, uh, expandability, and capabilities. So let's get started here. So in order to open this machine, it's got a tab right here, pushes, so, and then it pulls backwards. So the panel slides backwards when you put, when you push that, um, where did it go? This little doohickey up here, the blue tab. So this pulls off, lifts up. So like most of the Dell small form factors, it has this shroud. Let's see if I can show that. It has this shroud around the CPU. These two uh, half circle um, pullouts just pull and you can see them bend and this thing just lifts right out and that gives us easy access to the CPU. <clears throat> this has two PCI Express slots, a 1X and I believe the other one is a 16X for a video card. Um, they're currently occupied by, it looks like, so So this particular machine actually came out of an IT environment, so they've, I, I receive a lot of machines from this source, they, they configure them typically as like print servers, network devices, stuff like that, so they usually have devices like these. Looks like this one has a PCIe parallel port, guessing that was for a printer. And then it has an additional PCIe um, uh, network card. So take those out. And then, so to access and, uh, let me see, Let's see where you can, okay, so to pull out the hard drive, so this particular um, business that I get these from, he always gets these configured with these, uh, these 2.5 drives. You can do it both ways. You can put them as, as a single 3.5 or one of these dual drives. So in order to remove those, what you want to do first, if you have a machine configured like this, if you don't, you'll just see a single uh, single SATA power. But with the way this one is configured, let's see if I can make this a little more visible here. Ah, this is not working. Okay, there we go. Okay, so in order to remove them, the first thing you want to do is pull out uh, pull out this. And it has a little place where it kind of notches in there and you unplug from the first and then there's another one underneath a second drive and that just pulls out and this is actually just a little adapter that that comes off. Let me just put that aside. And then in order to remove the rest of it you just pull the SATA ports. There's, they take a firm tug but when you tug them they just come out. And then in order to remove the drive itself, um, the way that you do this, let's see here, yeah, there we go. Okay, the way that you do this is it has a, this right here, and it's just gonna slide that direction. So it moves, it locks in place and unlocks. Eh, still getting used to this being in reverse. There we go, okay, so you just pull that out and then this should just lift right up. And actually, usually with these Dells, the way you want to do it is you want to remo remove the, uh, the front panel first. Should have mentioned that. So it's just these tabs. Tab, tab, and tab. And it literally just pulls right off. It's nothing complicated. And then you can pull this up. And it's hinged here and here. So it kind of lifts up, and it's actually it's 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 two different items. It's the hard drive caddy and the optical drive in one. And the optical drive has another cable. Let's see if I can make that visible, so you can barely see it here. But the optical drive is back here. You just pull on. It'll be one orange cable. You just pull it. It's a little bit tight against the uh, the CPU uh, cooler, but it it comes right out. And that has a a, a, a data and a power cable. Okay, so that comes right out. And then underneath that, 
we have our RAM slots. There are four of them. This unit, I did check, and it does support up to uh, 64 gigs of RAM, like most, most 6th gen and newer systems uh, that have four RAM slots support individual 16 gig sticks, four sticks total, um, for a grand total of 64 gigs. Um, it does have an M.2 slot right here. Can never seem to get that quite at the right orientation for the camera, but it's it's this connector. Oh, it's this connector right here, um, and that's uh, that's for a newer M.2 embedded. I don't know if it steals a uh, a, a SATA port. Uh, I'm I'm guessing it does, but I could be wrong on that. I'd have to do some serious research to, to make that uh, assumption. Um, but, so, like most Dells, um, let me pull a screwdriver here. So, like most Dells, it's just a standard, simple CPU slot. Or <laughs> CPU socket, shall I say. It's got four screws. You want to screw them? And it lifts right out. It looks like this particular one, usually they use something proprietary, but it looks like this particular one is using a standard four pin. I can't, I can't guarantee how standard everything else is, but that does appear to be using a standard, uh, 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 what am I, what should I call it? It's just a standard plug for the fan. So you could probably put an aftermarket low profile uh, CPU cooler on this. So, CPUs right there. Um, PCI Express, which is going to be a big thing for most people. I cannot get this lined up right. There we go. Okay. Um, so, it does have quite a bit of space. That's a little bit larger than a single slot. So, you'd be able to get a fairly thick, not, not insane, not like one of those, those ultra-thick ones. You probably want to go still with a single-slot card, but if you have a single-slot card that's slightly on the larger side, it'll probably fit, um, and it just slots in right here. So, so uh, a, a mid-thickness, like GTX 1050, um, would be perfect for this build. And these are offered with anything from a... Uh, I think most of them had at least a mid-spec uh, uh, i5 on them, like an i5 6400T, i5 6500, all the way up to an i5 6700, or I'm sorry, i7 6700. Um, you're going to start seeing these come off uh, leases and out of business offices in bulk over the next couple of years, and uh, they will be, if, if you don't need to upgrade, uh, to a really really high end video card, and even even a ten like a 1050 Ti is still enough for most people. Even even casual gamers are going to be happy with a 1050 Ti. Um, if you don't need to put something like a GTX 1080 or something like that in here, um, this is this is an insane little powerhouse of a machine. And and again, uh, these small form factors because so many people on the secondary market do want to put a high high end video card in these, they do tend to get devalued just for that reason, and just overall lack of expansion. But if, if you can deal with, I mean, as you saw, it's got an M.2, it's got an optical, a SATA optical drive, which nobody uses anymore, so you can replace that with a hard drive. So you have at least three uh, available SATA ports, um, and, and that's, I mean, that's more than enough. Um, with with the availability of five terabyte 2.5 drives now, I mean you you could easily put five 10 terabytes of space and an SSD in this thing, which is really more than enough even for most power users. But because of the fact that there are some restrictions, again as I said, it does tend to devalue these kind of units on the second hand market. So sometimes you can pick these up very very cheap, and a lot of people that have these have no idea what they have. You'll get a unit with, say, an i7-6700, 32 gigs of RAM, and some mid-level Quadro or, uh, or Fire Pro card in it. 
and, and you've got basically uh, an ultra small form factor gaming desktop and, and the seller will have no idea what they have on their hands and you'll pick the thing up for 150 bucks when a comparable custom system would be five, six, seven hundred dollars. So these are a great unit to keep your eye out for if, if you're looking to game on a budget. The other thing you can do with these too, because your main costs are, uh, are DDR4 RAM and CPU, um, Z170 and Z270 boards on the secondhand market, particularly eBay, are extremely cheap. You could, you could take this unit, take the expensive parts, and put them on a custom board. All you would need is a power supply, a custom board, and a case, and you would have a full-on, top-of-the-line, custom 6th Gen i7 gaming desktop for, I mean, if, if you found the right deal, you could probably do it for four or five hundred bucks. I mean, it's, these are massively devalued in some cases. Um, so anyway, I hope everybody finds this interesting. Um, uh, I guess if you have any other questions, I'll try to answer if anybody has questions at the bottom, but try to watch the video. I guess if you've, got, <laughs> if you've gotten this far, you watch the video. But um, in any case, uh, I think everything of real... Oh, I guess one more thing before I shut this off. Go over the port options. So on the front, although we took our, our front panel off, um, on the front you've got two USB 3.0. Oops. Two USB 3.0s, our nice blue ones there. And a two USB 2.0s. It also has a... Our, our, um, which one's your Just our front, uh, front panel audio. And then on the back, we have four USB 3.0s, two, two USB 2.0s. Assuming you don't have a video card in it, you've got, uh, VGA. I'm kind of surprised they still have that, but they do. You've got VGA, uh, dual display. Oops, sorry. Okay. VGA dual display ports, and HDMI. I am I know you can run at least two monitors simultaneously. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the specs to know for sure the total number. I, I'm guessing it might be three total, but I know you can at least do two. Um, and then I'm assuming you should also be able to run 4K off of these as well. If anyone has specific questions on that, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll do a... Anyway, though, um, I think that should be all the information everybody needs. Uh, 180 watt power supply. I think that's the last thing. I don't think we're... <laughs> I keep coming up with stuff, but I think uh, 180 watt power supply is the uh, the last thing of, uh, of relevance here. So uh, anyway, I hope everybody finds this useful and informative. And uh, again, any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them when I get at it. Anyway, um, thanks for watching the video.